go. Hi, my name is Neil Metri. Hi, my name is Deepesh Shanamini, and together we are from Green Oak High School, located in Cary, North Carolina. Today we'll be giving you our stock pitch on United Airlines. Here are some key details of the company. Their ticker industry, current stock price of $47.24. Target stock price based on extensive calculations of $104.70. And we recommend overall that you buy the stock and we'll be explaining why. Starting off, we have company statistics on the left-hand side of the screen. Moving on to company history, United Airlines was founded in 1926 by William E. Boeing, the same Boeing that made the airplane company. United is known for the significant assistance it gave to the Allied powers during World War II, such as through parts, through funding, and through airplanes. Uh, currently headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, where it started off, that's where United Airlines is. Uh, moving on to company overview, United is one of the three predominant U.S.-based international airlines. With a current workforce of 93,000, an annual passenger load of 165 million, and spanning across six continents, United, United Airlines clearly asserts itself as one of the, the greats of the airline industry. Okay, so looking at why you should buy United Airlines' stock, the first reason being their commitment to a personal improvement. They started looking for carbon um, substitutes to using carbon fuels and moving to 100% green technology. This is only going to help them in the future when fuel prices rise and companies are scrambling to look for substitutes. United is going to be well ahead of the game. Um, in terms of services offered, they have the most comprehensive route network spanning across six continents and 340 destinations. They're located in major population hubs, giving them an access to a maximum amount of people and profits in turn. And recent growth across the years... So as seen by COVID-19, um, companies experienced hits, but United Airlines was able to bounce back from this. And this was seen in financial year 2022 with a growth of almost 82%. And um, in addition to this, their <clears throat> debt per equity ratio and CAGR are well ahead of their competitors, Delta Airlines and American Airlines as well. Moving on to an industry analysis, the industry which all these predominant airlines fall under is, the airline, is an airline holding company. <clears throat> United Airlines has a current CEAGR compounded annual growth rate of 3.5%, which when compared to its competitors of Delta and American is much higher. Although COVID-19 was extremely detrimental to the industry and it caused drops in revenue due to lockdown procedures and lacks, lack of tourism, United is rebounding extremely quickly with 3.5% growth rate compared to both of its competitors. Competition in the airline industry is an oligarchy. What this means is basically that there are three major airlines that, contrib that contribute to the majority of the market share. Although this competition is an oligarchy, United still comes out on top with serving the most amount of destinations, the most amount of countries, having the highest ranked loyalty slash frequent flyer program, and having and having a, a earnings per share value of 8.75, which is greater than both American and Delta. So, um, looking at competitive positioning, I would say that United Airlines has a narrow mode. This is because although they can maintain a competitive advantage, it could be lost easily just due to the volatility of the industry. But there are three key factors giving them competitive protection, such as brand name. They've built this over 100 years and through advertisements, both online and in paper, this is only going to extend. And cost advantages, they have the third largest market share in the industry, which gives them purchasing powers, allowing them to improve their Polaris lounges and business classes, which are currently rated number one, as well as um, new um, advancements to airplanes, such as their narrow body fleet. In addition to this, network efficiency, which I briefly touched on earlier, they have the most comprehensive route network. And then aside from this, they also have um, partnerships with Star Alliance and Hertz Rental Car Service. And through Star Alliance's um, extremely prestigious million miler programs and upgrades, um, United Airlines can maintain their high switching costs. And this is our Porter's Five Forces Analysis with a one out of five being an extremely high risk and a five out of five being a relatively low risk.
moving on to ESG, United is an industry leader when it comes to this. United's ambitious goal to reduce GHG emissions by 100% by 2050, by 2050 has not been done by anyone else in the industry so far. Additionally, United was the first airline to declare a climate goal with zero carbon offsets. This was the if for, this is massive as United was the first company first airline in the entire world to do this, which means that oftentimes other airlines will follow in its footsteps. Moving on to society, United bases its, its endeavors off of a four-pillar system of relief, inclusion, leadership, and sustainability. Throughout this, United finds causes which inspire it and donates, and donates large sums of money in order to expand these causes and give them greater light. Moving on to governance, United treats its employees more like family than like employees. Through, core value, through instilling core values in their employees and giving them great benefits for maternity leave, mental health days, United tr really treats its, its employee base as a close, tight-knit family. One of the most descriptive examples of this is United's is most recent campaign, where they made 52,000 employees aware of the dangers of trafficking and how to protect themselves against them. Okay, going into financial analysis, you can see three sources of revenue, ticket sales, cargo transfer, and miscellaneous revenues from um, loyalty programs and other credit card programs that they have. They also have a debt to equity ratio of 2.7, which it basically means that they're very well off to um, cover their liabilities and remain stable compared to other airlines in the business. They also have the highest earnings per share in the business of 8.64, which means that they will outpace competitors such as um, Delta and American Airlines in the future. Um, going into valuation, we looked at a company, comparable company analysis, looking at key metrics such as price per earnings and EV over a bid to ratio, which basically indicated that the company was severely undervalued. Going off of this, we made a DCF analysis, and this gave us an intrinsic value that was way higher than the current stock price, which only gave us more evidence that the company was seriously undervalued. Moving on to investment risk, United is played by three investment risks, external forces, recovery, and asset scarcity. External forces such as global conflicts such as Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, and Israel have been impacting the, neg the, the airline industry negatively by decreasing the revenue. Although not as great as COVID, it has still been negative. Secondly, recovery. When we were doing our calculations for United, United came up with extremely low Altman's e-score. This means United's chances of recovering from bankruptcy are extremely low. So if something drastic happened to United, it would have a hard time getting back to being stable and getting back on its feet. Third off, asset scarcity. The entire airline industry is currently being plagued by increased petroleum prices and a global shortage of pilots and air traffic control officers. This just makes the expensive costs of machinery, such as airplanes, even higher. So as you can see, the management of United Airlines is headed by CEO Scott Kirby, with COO Top John Enquist, CFO Mike Leskinen, and President Bret Hart under him. And um, all these um, employees have prior extensive prior experience to working with United Airlines. And three of United Airlines' largest shareholders would be Vanguard, PrimeCap, and BlackRock. Moving on to AI impact, opportunities of AI are processing speed, such as AI can complete data analyses in seconds compared to the hours it takes a human. Cost efficiency, AI can solve problems and resolve conflicts free of charge compared to having to pay a salary for a human or paying an hourly wage. Thirdly, machine learning algorithms. Through the promising future of machine learning algorithms, an example of what, how we could use them would be to optimize flight bookings, to prevent underbookings or half booked flights or overbooked flights, sa increasing customer satisfaction and revenue. Thirdly, and secondly, risk. A risk with this is AI could replace humans and pilots. Although very far in the future, this would be a great risk. Secondly, data privacy. Many consumers would not trust AI with their information such as passports and social security used to bookings. Thirdly, malfunction. AI, as with any technology, can malfunction, leading to ca cause of loss of life and negative media, which would detrimentally impact the company. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. Bye.